demonic angel. Today I'm going to talk about, uh, tell the story of uh, the time that Salvadel uh, Dali, the surrealist painter, met uh, Sigmund Freud. Um, basically, uh, if you don't know who Salvador Dali is, uh, he's a really popular uh, painter from like the early 1900s, um, even into the, the mid-1900s. And um, a lot of his paintings are actually really uh, famous. Um, when he uh, met Freud, he actually did sketches of him, you know, while they met. And I'll do a link in the description of some of that kind of stuff. But essentially, um, Freud is one of the, he's, he's basically regarded as the first modern um, psychoanalyst. Um, and he had friendships with Jung and a lot of other important people um, early on in psychology. And so uh, F Freud was actually very um, famous uh, in his own, own lifetime. And uh, people came from all over to his practice because one of the big uh, things that, that Freud was famous for was having a really, um, the, the bed, like a couch, like, like I'm sitting on, and, and he'd have people lay down on it and then he'd sit in a chair and take his notes and people would, uh, you know, the, the idea was people would relax and then that would help them to, um, you know, bring consciously forth all these feelings that they, they um, you know, need to express and, and kind of tantalize them, right? Um, so Salvador Dali, he, you know, wanted to meet Freud, actually. He, he stated um, that he wanted to meet him so bad that he, he spent a long time fantasizing what it would be like to talk to Freud. So he basically um, said, oh boy, like when I, when I meet Freud, he is going to just be climbing up the walls and the curtains because I'm going to tell him, you know, basically implying that he would be telling him such weird things that maybe Freud had never heard before that he wouldn't even know what to think. Um, so for years in, in, in Dolly's mind, he imagined what this, this would be like to meet Freud. Um, and, uh, there was a mutual friend of, of the two. Um, Freud really wasn't, uh, too impressed by, um, kind of what would be the, um, pre predecessors of the hippies in a way like the beatniks, uh, surrealist painters, it's, you know, it it's, doesn't quite fit that uh, 1950s Jack Kerouac kind of thing, you know, um, atmosphere yet. However, um, I think that there's there's some of the beginnings of that, um, you know, right right around and before World War II. Uh, so, so Freud just, he wasn't interested though in, um, in, in these new kinds of movements or, or thoughts, painters and artists is kind of the way he, he saw that. And he was just interested in what he thought was objective science, but obviously there really is no such thing as objectivity. Um, so, so yeah, they now, um, when they did meet, they actually did meet in London. Freud was in his 80s and Dolly was like in his 30s. Um, and the reason Freud moved to London is because he was trying to escape um, the, the Nazis. And uh, so he ended up moving to London and he recreated his office actually, like he had, um, I believe, in Austria. I think that's where 
um, Freud might have been from, or, or Germany. Um, so he sets up shop, and the mutual friend um, gets in touch with them, and set you know then they're able to set up this meeting, and uh, along to the meeting, um, Dolly brings his painting, and I think it's called. Um, the evolution of narcissists, uh, it, it's something really similar to that, and I'll do a link in the description, but narcissist referring to the Greek story where the guy, um, he, he's a hunter, he's beautiful, and he sees his own reflection, and he falls in love with his own reflection, and he is named narcissist. Well, that's what um, that's the painting that that Dolly brought to this meeting, and um, you know, even though Freud was not a uh, outwardly um, oh emotionally expressive guy, he did write um, some fond kinds of things about Dolly that just he had these very sharp intelligent kind of eyes and that he uh, he was very impressed so during the meeting um, Dolly did a few different sketches of Freud and showed Freud and and Freud actually you know ended up thinking it was pretty good um, and basically Freud continued to practice at his uh, London office till not long before he died um, like and, you know, a few weeks or something. Um, and essentially, uh, Freud smoked um, cigars for a long, long time. Uh, he was kind of, you know, he really didn't, he, he, he denied having any kind of addiction for a long time. Um, but he eventually got mouth cancer and he just told um, some close associates when it comes time for, for you know, just the, the misery, the physical agony um, is just too much. Um, have mercy on me. So they you know, came to his home and uh, administered morphine to him. A few, a few, I mean, he lived through a few doses of it, but he was able to pass peacefully um, at the age of, I think, like, 80, shoot, 87, 89, close to 90 in there. But I, I, th I just thought I'd share that, that little um, story and uh, just how funny it is that, that D Dolly was just so excited to meet Freud. Uh, and Dolly was a really weird um, guy. I don't really know. One of the, one of the big things I know about his, his personal life is that he, he was married to a, a much older, um, I think like Russian woman, and um, he would um, like watch her having sex with other men, and that was his thing. He was much, very much a voyeur, um, but he was like that just in regular, you know, life, like watching people, you know, wait for the bus or whatever, and it just... He wanted to, you know, be essentially a voyeur, uh, looking in on everybody in that kind of way. That was his thing. That was like his, his kink or whatever. He he probably wanted to tell Freud about, but, <laughs> um, you know, he he also just um, was was interested in those thoughts that that Freud uh, at the time was kind of popular for. Although Jung really goes into it, you know, and, and things a lot more, because uh, it was really a passing interest of Freud's. But but dream um, interpretation, uh, the influence of, of uh, dreams, and you know the whole thing of um, dream messages and the whole idea of these, uh, you know, because that's what Freud brings is that three-layered conscious, the id, the ego, the superego that how do these all interact and and it's and Dolly was very very much interested in in having a conversation about that um, you know he he obviously 
I guess just self was self aware enough to to want um, to share his uh, bizarre uh, thoughts with um, with Freud, and I think history is glad that 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 meeting happened. So, anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.